let's talk about cholinergic system and whenever the word cholinergic comes uh, the main compound which comes uh, to our mind is uh, acetyl acetyl choline right and suppose we have a neuron and that is capable of producing the neurotransmitter acetylcholine we can call this neuron as cholinergic neuron and suppose let's say this is the another neuron and we have a special type of receptor on it which can sense the presence of acetylcholine and can send the intracellular signaling uh, we can call this a receptor as cholinergic receptor so cholinergic system comprises of uh, the cholinergic uh, neuron which can produce acetylcholine or can reuptake and resynthesize acetylcholine and we also have cholinergic receptor and the main compound which is act as a neurotransmitter as acetylcholine now let's look in our body where do we find a cholinergic system let's say this is our brain and this is the midbrain pons and medulla and cerebellum and this is the spinal cord cholinergic system is found in the brain itself in the circuits of brain the cholinergic system and found in it works for the function of a memory and cognitive function in the brain so that is why the side effect is observed when we give anticholinergic drug uh, the side effect of anticholinergic one of the side effect of anticholinergic drug is memory loss because cholinergic system is responsible for a memory and cognitive function and many other function in the brain also uh, one statement to be made is that all the outflow from the central nervous system are cholinergic be it parasympathetic sympathetic or motor outflow now let's look uh, for the parasympathetic outflow parasympathetic outflow is generally craniosacral we have say from cranial side we have parasympathetic outflow we have generally uh, not generally we have mainly four uh, major parasympathetic ganglia in the head and neck that is ciliary ganglion which is made up of third cranial nerve uh, from seventh cranial nerve we have two ganglion that is one ganglion is a uh, sphenopalatine ganglion or pterygopalatine ganglion other ganglion is submandibular ganglion and from the this is from the seventh now and from the ninth now we have a ganglion called otic ganglion and uh, the vagus now these are the main four cranial now which contributes uh, to the parasympathetic system and also from the cranial side and also we have parasympathetic outflow from the sacral side right now if you talk about uh, ciliary ganglion ciliary ganglion mainly supplies the muscle of eye that is ciliaris and constrictor pupilli let's say this is the eye my god this is very bad eye let's say this is once again it is bad this is the eye but anyways it supplies ciliaris muscle this is the ciliaris muscle and of course the constrictor pupillae the uh, ciliary ganglion via short ciliary nerves uh, the sphenopalatine ganglion supplies the mucosal glands of nose palate pharynx and buccal mucosa and submandibular ganglion supplies two glands submandibular and sublingual gland the otic ganglion supplies the parotid gland vagus now the dorsal uh, which arise from the dorsal nucleus of the vagus vagus now supplies the bronchial glands the lungs vagus now also supplies to the heart vagus now supplies the liver pancreas the stomach the small intestine the ascending colon and up to one third of the transverse colon the vagus now supply and from the later two third the sacral now supplies these are s1 s2 and s3 also called nervi erigentes this supplies from the later two third of the transverse colon and the descending colon and the uh, rectum 
and the anus and of course the male and female genitals are also supplied by the sexual nerve so the outflow the preganglionic these are the preganglionic parasympathetic neurons and these are the postganglionic postganglionic parasympathetic neurons all the preganglionic postganglionic parasympathetic neurons are cholinergic moreover from the if say let's if i take a section over this and look for the spinal cord we have anterior horn and posterior horn from the anterior horn the motor root arises and it supplies to the muscle right and this is also releasing acetylcholine as a neurotransmitter so all the motor nerves are also cholinergic next thing is preganglionic sympathetic fibers right uh, sympathetic outflow is generally thoracolumbar and so from the let's say this is t2 segment and from the lateral horn of this uh, lateral horn of this spinal cord the preganglionic sympathetic nerve arises and form the sympathetic ganglia and let's say this is supplying also heart so preganglionic sympathetic ganglia are also cholinergic and some of the sympathetic uh, ganglia uh, sorry the some of the sympathetic nerves post ganglionic which supplies to the sweat gland are also cholinergic to the sweat gland and also to some of the uh, say blood vessels so in a nutshell let's summarize where do we find cholinergic system number one cholinergic system is found in the brain all the preganglionic fibers which are arising from the spinal cord are always cholinergic be it preganglionic parasympathetic fibers or be it preganglionic sympathetic fibers right all of them are cholinergic also the motor nerves which are coming out from the spinal cord uh, from the anterior horn of the spinal cord and supplying to the muscle are also cholinergic and some of the post ganglionic sympathetic neurons which supply to the sweat glands and some of the muscles are also cholinergic so this was the distribution of the cholinergic system in the body and uh, where do we file acetylcholine as a neurotransmitter now in this diagram we can explain some of the uh, part of the cholinergic system this uh, let's say if we can uh, talk about this ganglion this ganglion has preganglionic neuron and also postganglionic neuron and the junction between this neuron neuron to neuron this junction we can call as n n junction and junction between this neuron and this muscle is called an m junction so we can uh, define two uh, dignities of the cholinergic uh, system in this diagram that is nn junction and nm junction and rest of the things about the receptors we'll talk in the next video the receptors uh, are the macromolecules which can sense uh, especially the cholinergic receptors which can sense the presence of acetylcholine or its related compound and gives intracellular signals we'll talk about cholinergic receptors right in the next video